Welcome back to the Beyond the Wormhole series and Kerbal Space Program. Last episode we used four different launches to construct an exoplanet colony ship in orbit that we'll be taking to another habitable planet in the Cacaubolo system. And so yeah, we've got three cargo pods here that we'll be using to deliver cargo down to the surface using another SSTO that I'll be rendezvousing with the colony ship at its destination which is the tidally locked eyeball planet Saluko in the Sun Orc system that orbits the black hole Cacaubolo, all of which lie beyond the wormhole that the mod has placed in orbit around either Joule or Sarnus, whether or not, just depending on whether or not you have Outer Planets mod installed. If you don't, it'll place it around Joule, but if you do, it'll place it around Sarnus. And so right now we are executing our escape trajectory burn away from Kerbin. And this is going to take multiple burns at periapsis to kick our orbit high enough to escape Kerbin's sphere of influence due to this ship's relatively low thrust to weight ratio. And so we'll just be swinging around a few times to progressively kicking our orbit higher and higher until we eventually escape um, the planet's sphere of influence. And so I'm just about done with my second burn right now. And we'll swing around just one more time, I think, until we can escape um, Kerbin Sphere of Influence on a prograde trajectory towards Sarnus, which is the Saturn analog added to the Kerbal system by the Outer Planets mod, which is super classic, highly recommend it. Just adds um, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto analogs to the stock Kerbal system. It's kind of like an expansion, if you will. It's very stock alike and I highly recommend it. And, it, and it's compatible with the Cacaubolo system mod. And like I said before, it'll place the wormhole around Sarnus if you have both installed. But if you don't, no biggie, it'll just place it around Joule and you guys can recreate this mission with that destination. So now that I'm kind of on, aligned on my escape vector out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, I'm gonna start looking at continuing my burn so that we can kick our APWAPs up to intersect Sarnus's orbital line which is um, at a transfer window of just, I mean, maybe 10 to 15 degrees past 90 degrees. That's kind of how I do it. I always just do it kind of by eye. So right now I've just kind of kicked my orbit up high enough so that it intersects. And then I have an inclination adjustment burn set after to tweak to make sure that I can get an encounter. And I'm warping to that right now. Um, and it's about a 3000 meter per second burn. I'm doing this a little bit more inefficiently by not doing the majority of this burn at my Kerbin periapsis, but it's a little bit easier this way to keep my vector straight um, for like such a long duration burn this far out. So I'm willing to spend the extra fuel for that extra bit of accuracy. Um, but yeah, just a 3000 meter per second burn. And this ship has about, I think maybe just under 9,000 meters per second of Delta V which is more than enough to get us to our destination. I'll just let you guys watch for a second while we do that. So our apoapsis is about high enough to intersect the orbit of Joule. And I'm just checking out how my fuel is playing out here. I have this guy on kind of a, um, a multi-stage setup so I can detach some of these empty fuel tanks as I go along. Um, looks like my radial tanks are about ready to go. So I'm just going to detach those here. It looks like they're drifting towards my ring. Oh, my little habitation ring got bumped there, but no damage. That looks like... We're doing all right, but it might run into my solar panels here, actually. So I might have to close those. Uh, wait, accidentally fired my engines. I gotta close these real quick. Oh, cool. So I saved my solar panels on my right side or my left side, depending on which way you're looking at it. And we're just continuing that burn. Looks like we only have about 300 meters per second left after um, we did our first stage separation. And this burn is going to be an inclination adjustment to make sure that our orbital plane is matched up with the Sarnus system. 
so that we're coming in aligned with the moons and the wormhole that orbit uh, the planet. Looks like we've got our encounter there too, so that's cool. We focus on Sarnus here and we can start adjusting our flyby or start thinking about that. So we're going to be doing a thread the needle type maneuver through the wormhole that orbits uh, Sarnus, which is this light gray orbit that I've selected as my target. So I'm just playing around with the um, radial and retrograde um, markers on my maneuver node planner until we get kind of an encounter with the wormhole at my Sarnus periapsis. And so we don't actually need to circularize around the wormhole to go through it and enter the Cacabalo system on the other side. All you have to do is pass through the wormhole at um, an altitude of below uh, 30,000 meters. So as long as you do that, You'll enter the wormhole and you will be able to pass through on the other side with kind of your speed intact. You won't be captured around the wormhole on the other side of your orbit, which is advantageous and can save you an extra burn since you're going to have to decapture around the wormhole if you were to capture on the wormhole beforehand, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to be doing this thread the needle type maneuver so that we can preserve our speed through the wormhole and onto the other side in the Cacabalo system. So I'm just doing some adjustments there to make sure that I can get that periapsis flyby below 30,000 meters to actually jump through the wormhole itself. I'm trying to make sure that I'm still kind of on the same plane that the wormhole is orbiting to so that I don't get flung out of the correct plane. And I'm warping ahead till I encounter the Sarnus system in about three and a half years. All right, we should be able to see Sarnus coming up in just a little bit, so I'm starting to look around for it. Um, here's my kind of final execution of my flyby of the wormhole. I'll be warping ahead till I'm kind of further in into the system. But yeah, it looks like our wormhole orbit is set up for a really good flyby, so that's good. I'm gonna warp ahead till I'm kind of in the sphere of influence of the wormhole. And there's Sarnus on our left. We're kind of on the same plane as the ring, so unfortunately we can't see it on this pass around. But if you guys want to see Sarnus, you can check out some of my other videos where I get a little bit closer. But yeah, we should be coming up on the wormhole here shortly. Hard to see because it's just a giant, like, black orb. Oh, there it is. You can even see into the other system through it. And looks like we're through the wormhole and into the Sarah system, which is that planet, uh, kind of deserty planet you see next to you. Yeah, so we're in the Cacabalo system. So I have to zoom out of the Kerbal system and find the Cacabalo system, which is all the way over here. Then focus on this yellow star called Sun Orc and onto the planet Sarah to find my trajectory and re and re like track it in the tracking station. Um, and looks like it's put me on a solar trajectory out of the Sarah system and into a solar orbit above Sun Orc. And I'm trying to go to Saluco, which is that more interior yellow highlighted orbit that I've set as my target. So we're going to do some maneuvers to get an encounter. And first we're going to do this inclination matching burn for just over 500 meters per second of Delta V. And that'll just make sure that we're aligned once again so that we can get that encounter a little bit easier. All right, looks like we're matched. And now I just gotta lower my periapsis down to intersect the orbit that I've set as my target. You can see those um, closest approach marker arrows pop, start to pop up. And the goal would be to get those right on top of each other so that we have the closest approach within 
um, the planet's sphere of influence. So to kick this periapsis down to intersect the planet, it's going to be another thousand plus meter per second burn. Um, and we're just about done with our with our second stage um, of this interplanetary vehicle, which are these two side canisters and two engines. It's starting to flip off kind of weird. That's like maybe a glitch, but now we're down to two sets of engines and just one tank of fuel with just about four and a half thousand meters per second of delta V remaining. Cool. looks like we're intersecting so I'm just looking ahead to see if I have any natural encounters in the next few orbits and it looks like I get pretty close in a few orbits so I'm just gonna modify that a little bit so until I get an encounter which I did in just over two years can save a little bit of fuel that way waiting for a better flyby so it looks like our encounter burn will be just about 600 meters per second of delta V. Cool, looks like we got our encounter. So now I just need to set up a better flyby of Saluco. There it is. It's probably good enough for now. Let's get a little bit closer actually. Cool. And I'll warp ahead till that maneuver. We'll go ahead and put our finishing touches on our trajectory into the system itself. Cool, that looks good. We can go ahead and warp ahead into the system, into the planetary system. We'll be able to see it really shortly. Just testing how long it would take to circularize around the planet. Do a little quick save and I'll warp ahead. We should be here. There it is in the distance. The tidally locked planet Saluco. So this is kind of an interesting planet because it's tidally locked to its star. So kind of like our own moon, the same side of the planet faces the star at all times. Which kind of results in this like scorched edge of the planet that faces the star. Followed by a ring of water where the temperatures are a little bit cooler with the sun lower in the sky. And then the back side of the planet is fully kind of forever in darkness and it's covered by a massive ice sheet. But yeah, it's a pretty cool sight. You can see the black hole in the distance, cacao below, on the left of the planet. I'm just gonna warp ahead till we get our first capture burn. Start that for about a thousand meters per second of delta V to capture. We'll be passing through the night side of the planet. Okay, looks like we're captured. I'll let you guys check out some views. Our first view of our new colony world, Saluco. And I gotta set up some maneuvers in the next few orbits to kind of put the finishing touches on my orbit to circularize. You can see there the weather on this planet's are kind of interesting. It like the cloud systems like rotate from the poles north to south. It's kind of interesting. Okay, looks like we need to do another. Oh, that's a cool view. Anyway, this is a cool view. You can kind of see how it turns from like desert to green, green, like grassland and that ring of ocean and then the ice sheet on the night side of the planet.
getting closer to circularization. Probably just going to take one more pass at a retrograde burn until we can circularize just like that. This will be our final burn of the episode. Let me just make one last tweak actually, real quick, just to make that orbit super perfect. Cool. All right, we're here guys. This is the, uh, the new spot for our colony, it's Luco. Anyways, in our next episode, we'll be flying these cargo pods that are docked to the back of my ship down to the surface they contain like habitation modules um like a rover all that jazz we're going to be flying uh, another cargo ship to rendezvous with the colony ship in orbit and that's going to take those guys down um to the surface so yeah make sure to tune in for that i'll see you guys in the next episode but yeah thanks for watching guys peace out